Hello everyone, Sanli here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build an advanced hybrid guardian farm in your Bedrock Edition worlds. This guardian farm is pretty insane, producing up to 55,000 drops per hour, getting you to level 50 in just about 3 minutes, and overall is pretty crazy. So this farm has two different modes. Mode 1 is you can send all the guardians to the nether and kill them in a nether side kill chamber, which is pretty standard for Bedrock Edition guardian farms. The other mode is an overworld only guardian farm that kills all of the guardians with trident killers, sends all of the experience, loot, and all of the drops directly to the player at the AFK point. This allows you to get a ton of guardians extremely quickly, all of the loot that you could ever imagine, and also allows you to use looting 3 remotely. Overall, this farm is pretty overpowered. I would highly recommend it. But with that being said, this is the advanced version. It's going to take a little bit more time and a little bit more dedication to build. So let's talk about the rates of this Guardian farm. So when you're using the overworld only method of using the Trident Killers and sending all the loot and experience to the AFK player, you'll get to level 30 in under one minute and you'll get to level 50 in about three minutes. This will also produce around 55,000 drops per hour if you're doing good but on average you'll get about 50,000 drops in total there's going to be a lot of fish from this farm so i hope that you like smelting that down and if you smelt that down in a furnace you can of course get extra experience from that now if you send all the guardians to the nether side of the farm then you're going to get 200 guardians in about one minute so that's basically the entire mob cap <laughs> as you can see this farm is quite overpowered and really you just want to build this in your world regardless of which way you want to use it this farm it cranks so how exactly do you use this farm it's incredibly straightforward all you need to do is stand here at the afk spot make sure that the farm is on you'll see all the trident killers running hold yourself a looting three sword and as you can see we're just getting tons and tons of experience i've already cleared my levels like three to four times and i have 170 levels this farm is totally insane as you can see we're getting all the experience delivered directly to us if we don't want that we can just kind of hold it there for trapdoor or burn it in lava because we simply don't need any more of it. Something that I personally think is very cool about the overworld only part of this farm is that the guardians actually shoot at you from their individual cells. Pretty sure this is a bug. However, they never live long enough to actually shoot you and damage you, so you kind of just get a free laser show and it's really awesome to look at. If you are playing on a multiplayer world and other people want to use this farm, the player who wants to use the farm will need to go around and pick up and throw all of the tridents in the farm. So what if you want to send all the guardians to the nether and kill them there? All you need to do is flick the lever that'll turn off all of the trident killers in your entire farm and all of the guardians are officially going to the nether. If you are playing on a low end device do not afk at this farm for long if you're sending all of your guardians to the nether. This farm will give you 200 guardians per minute so if you cannot handle 200 guardians a minute simply do not afk for that long at this farm i'm serious don't do it if you get too much lag in your world load it in peaceful anyway i just afk for a minute let's go to the nether check out all the many 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 guardians that we have over here as you can see it's already a little bit laggy just with 200 of these guys but this is the nether side kill chamber it's definitely very safe and you can kill all these guys with a looting three sword or you can simply throw your splash potions at them to kill them that way either way it's very good for experience so real quick let's do a little breakdown of this farm and what makes it special so this right here is an individual cell as you guys might know there are only really 25 spawning spots in an ocean monument on bedrock edition we surround those 25 spawn spots with these individual cells and this allows us to do many many different things so right now it is in its default position which is sending all the guardians to the nether as you can see this block right there that piece of packed ice or rather right underneath of this block is the actual spawn spot so whenever a guardian summons in it just basically gets pushed directly into the nether portal and it gets out of the mob cap really really quickly allowing more guardians to spawn making for a very very efficient farm so when you send a signal from your afk platform to all of your different kill chambers what it's going to do is switch this over to state number two it is going to block off the nether portal so that it no longer allows guardians to go to the nether and it's going to open up the secondary channel and also turn on the trident killer 
So now whenever your guardians spawn in, they're going to get obliterated by that trident killer and they'll die within two hits, dropping all of their experience and loot into a water stream, which we can then send to our central collection system. A real quick note about the trident killer, it's kind of just the perfect storm of mechanics working the exact way that they do for it to work out perfectly. It's honestly quite nice. Normally trident killers nowadays are super painful, but this one it just works. So right now the guardians are blocked off from going either direction direction we can turn on the trident killer and as you can see the tridents actually hit the guardians through the corners of that block which is extremely convenient no hassle there at all it just works the way that you would expect it to the tridents never move and it's just extremely convenient and since the guardians are sitting in water we can use impaling five tridents to kill them twice as fast as regular unenchanted tridents of course the tridents never take their ability damage or despawn honestly it's just beautiful Beautiful. It works out amazingly, and I'm so happy that this one is way simpler than the improved uh, Phantom Farm, a Trident Killer. That thing took hours, but this thing is so simple. So, of course, a massive thank you to Skim and James for helping me build, design, test, and rate test this Guardian Farm. It took the three of us about five hours in total just hanging out in voice chat to come up with this design. Honestly, it works extremely well. It has amazing rates, and again, thank you, Skim and James, so very much for the help with this Guardian Farm. So, I've actually actually had the concept and the prototype of this guardian farm since about November however the day that I was gonna go ahead and start building this design and fully finishing it they broke mob spawning for guardian farms and structures so I basically was just like no <laughs> and Prowl actually released his guardian farm a day before that update which made it even less nice to uh, want to release a guardian farm so sorry for the delay however here is the guardian farm finally at this point a couple of other people have already made guardian farms of trident killers but that's kind of what i get for being slow to put out videos thank you very much to sea bones for requesting an updated guardian farm for the bedrock edition and for kicking my butt into gear to finally release this thing to the public that's just been sitting around for ages collecting dust for no reason sea bones is a patron of ours over on patreon helping support this channel and make every single video that i upload a possibility if you guys would like to help support the channel and get some cool rewards as well then check out Patreon at the links below. All right, so let's hop into the tutorial, shall we? First things first, there's going to be a full materials list for this Guardian Farm down in the description of the video. If you want to know all of the resources that you need to build this, just look in the description. So the first thing that we need to do is, of course, find ourselves an ocean monument and raid this thing to kill all the Elder Guardians, loot the sponges and the gold, do whatever you want to the ocean monument. It does not matter. And now we need to start prepping the ocean monument as well. So go to each of the four corners of your ocean monument, go down underwater, and this right here is the actual corner of the monument. You want to go one block past that and pillar up with a pillar of sand all the way to the surface of the water. And of course, do that on all four sides. So now that we have our four pillars in on all corners of the Guardian Farm, we want to go ahead and build up a wall that is three blocks tall connecting all of these pillars. I'm going to build it out of glass. You can build it out of whatever solid block you like. So just build a wall connecting this pillar to that one, that one to that corner one, that one to that one, and this one to this one over here. We're going to use some commands to make that far easier. And yeah, as you can see, that is what your wall should look like. And now we need to start filling in the floor as well. And this floor is going to be at Y59. When you're standing on top of the floor, that is going to put you at Y60 if you have coordinates enabled. So now we just need to fill that in going all the way across this entire thing so that we have ample room to build. So we're going to press that button. And as you can see, we now have a floor in place. This can be built out of pretty much whatever you want. I would recommend building it out of solid blocks, however. And now it is time to go through and mark out each of your guardian spawn spots. The entire ocean monument only has 25 spots where it will spawn guardians. So it's very important that you get each and every single one of these absolutely correct and perfect. Otherwise, you're going to significantly hamper your rates. As you can see, I've already marked these out in orange wool using a couple of commands, which you can see right here. Pretty simple stuff. 
it'll be down in the description if you want to use commands to find them. So for this part, you're going to want three things. One, some standard counting blocks that have an easy to count texture. Two, a marking block so that you know where each one of your spawn spots is. And three, a locator map. That way you can find the northwest corner of your guardian farm. It's very important that you start at the northwest corner. The spawn spot layout is exactly the same for every single ocean monument and every single world, no matter what you've done to it, it's always going to be the same and you have to start from the northwest corner. By the way, when you're using a locator map, the top of the map is always north. So if you go to the top left corner of the map, that is going to be northwest. Now that we have that all figured out, you want to go to the northwest corner of your little wall right here and go in diagonally by two blocks. The third block is going to be your first spawning space. And technically that is down here at the floor level, but we're going to be marking it out at the surface since that's a lot easier. Now you want to go south by 10 blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then on the 11th block is your next spawning spot. You want to go to the east by another 10 blocks. And on the 11th block is your next spawning spot. Go north by another 10 blocks. And now we have our next spawning spot on the 11th block. As you can see, that lines up the first one and these ones line up. One thing that you'll notice and that you should know right now is that all of the spawning spots in your ocean monument are in a pretty solid grid. However, it's not an evenly spaced grid. So as you can see, each one of these markers is completely lined up with all of the other ones. So that is the general gist of how you lay out these spawning spots. On screen right now, you can see a graph I've made of the distances in between each of these spawning locations. All of the numbers is the blocks in between, and the red blocks is of course the actual spawning spot. So we've already filled in the top left corner together, and using the graph that's on screen right now, you should be able to figure out the spacing for all of the other ones. Remember, these spawning spots are in a perfect grid, so if something isn't lining up, then you've probably done something wrong. So if you do everything properly, you should end up with something like this right now as you can see everything is gridded out everything lines up perfectly with one another and now you want to go ahead and remove all of the blocks that you use for counting however leave all of the blocks that you used as marker blocks so that we still know where all of our spawn spots are the final bit of preparation that we need to do for our guardian farm is to remove all of the water from our build area so use whatever method you are most comfortable with and now we should have a perfectly clean ready to go build area and now that our ocean monument is prepared for building, we can start construction of the individual spawning cells of our guardian farm. So we have a pillar right there, and that is in the direction of north, as you can see from looking at the map. So that is a little bit of frame of reference for you guys throughout the building process. And something that I want to mention is that the left side of this farm, these three rows of spawning spaces are going to be different and built in a different way than the right side of the farm. These two rows of spawning spaces over here are going to be mirrored. That way all the water streams and item collection work perfectly. So don't get carried away and build the entirety of the farm. You need to watch the whole tutorial to know how everything is laid out properly. So go to the northwest corner of your farm where we originally started mapping out all of our spawn spaces and this is the original block that we put here to mark out our spawn spaces of course i'm going to replace that with a different block since we're going to be putting a pistons right next to that and now we can start actually building up the cell so right below that you want to have three pieces of packed ice going to the east direction and then we want to have two solid blocks right here and completely surround the rest of this in glass blocks like so we can now go ahead and install our nether portal right here. We'll light this in just a moment, but for now the frame is there. Flip back around to the other side and go in here and we want to have a sticky piston right here on the side of that block and another one right there as well. Put some solid blocks on the faces of both of those blocks and that is going to be what decides where the guardians go. And now we can fill in the rest of this with some glass. So two pieces of glass right there, three pieces of glass in these locations. And you also want a piece of glass right underneath your identifier block. Now's a good time to mention that your identifier block should be a solid block like cobblestone, wood, something that is solid. It cannot be glass or a slab or anything. And now we need to put some more glass right there as well. Grab yourself a slab and we can have another piece of glass right there too. Put a solid block right there with a temporary lever right there. Flick the lever. You want a redstone torch on the side of that block. 
going into a repeater which will power that piston and that'll alternate which way your guardians go when you're farming them. You now want to have two normal pistons pointing into this area right here and of course we now want to have a repeater coming out of that block that's going to go into a solid block like so and then you want to have a solid block right underneath this left piston. This one's right against the wall so it's going to be a little bit awkward to build but basically you want to have a piece of redstone dust right underneath that right side piston, another solid block, one more piece of redstone dust, get yourself a redstone torch on top of that piston and then a redstone repeater right there as well and that is this cell entirely done. So now when we flick that lever, the guardians will get killed by the trident killer. That one will be extended. If we flick it again, the trident killer will turn off and all of your guardians will go to the nether. You can light your nether portals now or you can save that for the end of the farm. If you're having issues with zombie pigmen spawning from your nether portals, all you need to do is put a few solid blocks right there and that should suffocate them as soon as they spawn. And then you can also replace the block underneath that repeater with a solid block as well. And that should, again, suffocate them as soon as they spawn. That is how you build the standard cell of this guardian farm where you can decide how the guardians die, either via trident killer or by sending them to the nether to be killed there. Now there might be some situations where you just do not care about sending them to the nether at all and you want a purely overworld only guardian farm in which case you want to build this next cell. So for a cell design that doesn't send them to the nether at all and has no option for it you want to go underneath your identifier block and place three pieces of packed ice going to the right side. We now want to have three solid blocks right here and go ahead and surround the rest of this in normal glass like so. Place in a slab for our items and experience to escape. And now we can go ahead and place in the two normal pistons for your trident killer. Surround the, the rest of this layer in glass blocks as well. And now we can install the redstone. You want a saw block right there, a lever, flick that, a redstone repeater going into a solid block with a block below it. Grab yourself some redstone dust, place it right there and right there. Get yourself a solid block right there redstone torch and then a repeater going back into that block and that is the entire cell design done for the overworld only design of course make sure that you have a piece of glass right underneath your identifier block and you can also put a solid block right in front of that piston too and now you know how to build both different cell types the nether and overworld version and the overworld only it does not matter which type you build, from here on out, the entire rest of the tutorial is the same for both versions. So pick which design you want to build, and now we need to build 15 of those in total on the entire left side of the farm. So as you can see, the left three rows of the farm are completely built up with all of our cells in place. However, the right two rows are going to be slightly differently. So the original cells, the basic default ones, have the water streams going out to the right and the right side of the farm, they need to have the water streams going out to the left. That way there's easy item collection and storage. Building your cells for the right side of the farm is basically the same as the left side. However, we're going to be mirroring them to go in the opposite direction. So go to the northeast corner of your farm and now we need to go underneath your identifier block. Put in your three packed ice for the water stream. Install the glass going around like so. Two solid blocks and a piece of glass right there. Install your upper slab in that corner. And now we can have two sticky pistons facing downwards to either side of that block. Put these solid blocks on the faces of those and the piece of glass underneath your identifier block. We can now go ahead and install the nether portal frame like so. Just go ahead and get that built up. Put in another saw block right here to the left of that one. And now go ahead and surround the rest of this in glass. Three pieces of glass right there to that side. Three pieces of glass to that side. Install your two pistons right here. Solid block underneath the right side. Piece of redstone dust underneath the left side. Another saw block. Another piece of dust. And one more solid block right there. Finishing touches is a solid block right there, lever on that solid block, flick the lever, redstone torch with a repeater right there, one more repeater right there, redstone torch right there, and finally the last repeater points back into that block. Unflick that, you'll see everything activate, and now the trident killer is online as well. For the final bits that you need to do is light the nether portal, 
and of course install those four solid blocks. So the mirrored design for the right side of the farm that is overworld only with no nether portal is going to be built as follows. Go ahead and go underneath your identifier block, three pieces of packed ice, go ahead and put your glass in in those spaces right there, three solid blocks in those spaces, get your upper slab in that location right there, you want your two pistons right there, a solid block underneath the right side, piece of redstone dust underneath the left side, solid block, redstone dust, solid block above there. From here, you want three pieces of glass on the right side, three on the left side as well, piece of glass underneath your identifier block, and a solid block right there. And then you can go ahead and fill in those two pieces of glass as well. And finally, we want a solid block right there, repeater, a redstone torch, and another repeater going into those. Install your lever, and that is your overworld-only version done for the right side of the farm. And now that you know how to build these cells for the right side of the farm, pick which one you're going to be building and extend those to the entire right side of the farm. And now once we have all of those in place, that is going to be all 25 of our spawning cells completely done. As you can see, it's looking pretty good. All we need to do now is connect them together using water streams. So the water stream layout is actually going to be an extremely simple thing. I'll go ahead and walk you guys through the majority of it. However, it is a very simple thing and honestly, you can't really mess it up. So I'm not going to do like a full entire block by block tutorial for this thing. Uh, but what you want to do is you want to go to the very center cell, which is this one right here, and go to where it has its little water stream output. Go to the right by five blocks. So one, two, three, four, five. And that right there is going to be a piece of soul sand. This is going to be the central elevator for all of the experience and all of the drops from your farm. And that's all going to be sent up to your AFK platform. We'll get to that later, but it's good for you to know that that's going to be like the center converging point of every single water stream in this farm. Go ahead and mine out this little row of blocks as well and replace that with packed ice. And now we need to go ahead and mine out this entire row of blocks going all the way to the top of the farm, lining up with that outlet, and then fill that in with a packed ice as well, going all the way back to the center and make sure to connect up that cell right there too. We need to do this for the south side. So mine out this entire row of blocks and then just put down a row of packed ice. You're going to be using a lot of packed ice for this, but you do only need to use packed ice. So don't worry about using blue ice. It's not really going to have any difference. So that right there is going to be the main little bit of water stream for the north and south. Going off from this is going to be a couple of different east-west direction water streams, which will then connect up to all of the other cells. Now go ahead and count eight blocks to the north of this central spawning spot. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this is going to be the next location of our east-west water stream. So go ahead and mine out this row of blocks going all the way in this direction until you get to here. You should have a one block gap from the end of this until you hit your cells. Fill that in, of course, with a packed ice. And then we need to do this on the other side as well. So mine out these blocks until there is a one block gap. So fill that in with your packed ice. And now we need to do that to the south side of your central cell as well. So count eight blocks to the south. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And again, do the same thing on this side. Mine it all the way to this direction and line it up with these cells over here. So there's a one block gap. Fill it in with a packed ice and do the same on the opposite side. And this is what you should have so far. You should have your three main water streams, one north-south one and two east-west ones. And from here, all you need to do is connect it together to all of your different cells. It's a very easy thing to do. And once you have the general layout of all of your ice paths in place, you need to put a wall around every single bit of every single one of your ice paths. I, of course, use glass because it looks nice. You'll be able to see in there to see if any items get stuck. But you could, of course, use any form of solid block, such as stone, cobblestone, wood planks, whatever you want. But every single piece of your ice streams does need to have a wall around it. That way, none of the water leaks anywhere that it shouldn't. When it comes to putting the water in your water streams, you really can't go wrong. The spacing of the farm makes it so that it basically builds itself. All you really need to do is place a water bucket at the exit of every single cell. Do not waterlog the slab. That'll break the farm. So go ahead and place a water bucket. Once that ends, place a stone pressure plate. And then basically just do that at every single cell. 
place strategic pressure plates to prevent the water from flowing where it shouldn't and then whenever you have a little gap it just install a repeating section using water honestly it's quite simple again it's basically just gonna build itself due to the spacing and we can take a look at this from above to see that everything really is very simple that is the layout of all of your different water sources and all of your different pressure plates so if done correctly all of your water streams it should converge right here to the center of the farm and how you can check if it works correctly is simply drop some items anywhere into your water streams and they should get pushed along not get stuck anywhere and end up in this location so finally place a couple of pressure plates right here one more pressure plate right there and place in your final piece of water and that'll push all of the items from your entire farm directly into the bubble column so we can go ahead and throw some items into just various points in our water streams and all of those items will end up eventually at the very center of the farm and this bubble column as you can see it is working quite fine i would suggest that you go ahead and throw items at the beginning of the water streams from every single cell just so that you know that the farm is working just fine and you can fix any problems that may arise the next step is very easy you just need to cover up the entirety of your water stream every single bit of your water stream needs to be covered in a block I'm gonna be using glass you can use pretty much whatever you want but make sure that you can place a redstone dust and repeaters on it since this is gonna be the foundations of our redstone lines and here is the final product of covering up all the water streams with glass Installing the redstone is incredibly easy. You need to start off on top of your central cell and place down a lever right on top of your marker block. Go ahead and place two pieces of redstone right there. You can then remove that lever and now all of your redstone is going to be going on top of the blocks that you just placed above your water streams. Whenever you reach an intersection, place down a solid block with a repeater going into it and this is going to extend your redstone power and also save you one piece of redstone dust overall making the farm cheaper and a little bit easier to build so then we're just going to extend the redstone dust until it basically dies we're hitting an intersection so a repeater going into a block and then we can extend it this direction remove any of the levers and point the redstone dust going directly into that block as this is going to be the on and off switch for the whole thing now because the redstone power is not going to reach all the way down over there we're simply going to place another repeater right here and a block at that intersection it'll now reach that uh you know cell right there so basically just lay out the redstone in that manner going all throughout the farm and this is more or less the layout that you should have when it comes to your redstone lines so once all of your redstone lines are installed, you can unflick that lever and you should see each and every single one of your spawn pods turn on and it's looking pretty beautiful. Flick that again and each and all of them should turn off, which is pretty nice. So now we need to install the AFK spot and you need to go 25 blocks above your central spawn spot. So above that piece of ice and that'll take you up to Y85. Up here we can install whatever platform that you like. Just make sure that you're right above that central spot. This spot right here is the perfect spot to AFK and it will allow you to get spawns in every single one of your cells. Now we need to install a torch tower going all the way up to our AFK spot. That way we can turn on and off the farm from our AFK spot. So place a solid block right there for redstone torch piece of redstone dust above that and then basically just repeat that entire thing going all the way up to the very top and then once you get to the top just put an extra block right there underneath your sea lantern put a lever on top of your sea lantern flick that and now we can finally remove that lever right there and that is officially the new on and off switch for your guardian farm and now you need to extend your bubble column going all the way up to your afk platform so put four pieces of glass going all the way around it all the way up to the top and you want to extend it four blocks past your afk platform as you can see i already built that and i extended the platform to meet the column so now we need to go four blocks to the left with the packed ice bring that around until it meets the afk spot right here in the center 
for a little bit of a C shape. Of course, you want to put a wall around the ice as well, and then go ahead and place a solid block over here, place a water bucket on top of that, let it flow, and then put a pressure plate on those two locations. One more water bucket, and you're pretty much done with this entire thing. You can go ahead and remove that solid block, and that should turn into a bubble column if everything is working. So now all of the items and experience are going to flow up the bubble column across this area, and then you can grab all the items from the water water stream using hopper minecarts and put that into your storage system. I'm not going to be doing storage in this tutorial since storage is completely subjective and everyone wants to do it differently. Also make sure to place a block right here above the water stream that way you never lose any items and all of the experience is just going to go along the water stream and then fall right here on the AFK spot ready for the player to collect them. I would highly recommend that you set up a system like this at the end of your water stream. What this will do is it'll hold all of the experience orbs until you flick the trapdoor and then they'll be collected by the player very useful for having an enchanting table over here go enchant at level 30 spend all your stuff come back here and grab some more experience and also install a lava burner as well as experience orbs are actually pretty laggy and if you let them build up for just a few minutes it's going to start to lag the game and the server so always have a burner available to just get rid of the things while you're not collecting them the next thing that you need to do is start working in the nether so take the nether portal coordinates of the very center cell and divide those by eight and build a nether portal at that location in the nether all of the nether portals in the overworld will automatically link to that portal in the nether and send all of the guardians there, which is pretty awesome. If you want yourself a player portal, I would suggest going about 50 blocks away from the farm and super high up in the air. This is the most reliable way I've found to have a nether portal not link to the kill chamber. So again, if we go through this, we're at a player portal and that is the actual portal that all the guardians will go at. If you want more information on linking nether portals, you can check out the tutorial that I made on the top. Topic. So this is more or less what your guardian portal should look like. We have blocks behind it and then as soon as they come out of the portal they fall into a 2x2 two two of lava with some signs below it. Ultimately they fall 12 blocks until they hit a lower half slab floor in which case we just have some hoppers below that to collect all of the items. There are iron trapdoors that are powered right here so that you can hit all the guardians but they can't really hit you. You can throw splash potions in there. You can do all of the good things but they can't do anything to you. You will also want a lava dispenser down here in case there are too many guardians. You can press that button and kill all of the guardians to remove the lag. It will not give you drops or experience. Overall, it's a very simple kill chamber to build. If you want a little bit of a bird's eye view of it, there you go. It should be very easy to build. You can't really mess it up. There's no perfect way to build them. I would also highly recommend that you set up a beacon here in the nether for regeneration and resistance. Beacon beams can go through bedrock, so you just need to remove the nether rack and other blocks above them. That beacon will significantly help you in the quest of staying alive while killing these guardians as they do some serious damage. Overall, I'd recommend killing them with harming two potions as you can kill a bunch at one time and then switch to the item of yours that needs mended. It doesn't take too many potions to kill them all and it's very satisfying. Your guardian farm is now nearly complete. All you need to do is activate the farm by placing a piece of water into each of the kill cells. So your water bucket needs to be placed right on top of that piece of packed ice and then simply put a, you know, glass block right there. I would recommend, uh, you know, having the farm in its on state while you do this. That way the guardians are not going to the nether. Again, that is very laggy. So place in all of your water buckets while the trident killers are active. To activate your farm, you need to throw two tridents into each one of your cells. One trident on the left piston and one trident on the right piston. As soon as those things get unpowered, it's going to activate the trident killers and it's just going to work perfectly and it's amazing and it's beautiful and every way. If you want to ever pick up those tridents so that another player can use the farm, simply walk on top of these pistons and you will pick them up pretty much immediately. Now ideally these tridents will have impaling five on them so that it kills the guardians in two hits. However, you can use just a basic unenchanted nearly broken default trident if you want and that'll kill all the guardians in four hits. So what if you want to properly churn off your farm so that you're not sending guardians to the nether or killing them with the trident killer? All you need to do is set up a dispenser to the side of the water source right there 
and then have a bucket in that press the button and bam no guardians will spawn in your chamber you could of course set up a redstone line to activate all 25 of the cells with dispensers but i will leave that up to you guys i personally think it's fine if you have it without the dispensers as long as you are responsible in your usage of this farm if you're on a multiplayer server definitely install those dispensers however this video has taken absolutely hours to record edit and produce and has technically been in the works since like november so about five months and if you could please leave a like on the video that would be greatly appreciated it helps out the video and the channel significantly and thank you ever so much for just watching to the end of the video you're a crazy person if you have any questions comments or concerns about this guardian farm please do let me know in the comment section down below i'm always trying to help you guys out as best as i possibly can also if you're new here make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss more tutorials like this you clearly like them if you're at this point in the video and i'll see you all down in the comment section and in the next one thanks again for watching and then there was silence